That's so good. I love it. Um, all right. Before we kick this this off, we should let people know. First of all, we're in Smith's Fitness. Um, Thanks for coming the, down. The gym is open, so you might hear some barbells crashing in the background. You might hear a little bit of music, but you're definitely going to hear us chewing on some meat pies and chalky milk. So sweet. So this is this is part of the. Re- I, I wanted to podcast with you for a while. It's lined up, but part of the reason was you put out a chalky milk, a meat pie and chalky milk challenge that you wanted to do, and I said that sounds like my kind of challenge. So tell the people about this. Well. I saw um, Jordan Syatt do it, who's uh, you know one of the fitness influencers, PTs. He's you know he's quite big on the internet, all that sort of stuff. And he did it with Big Macs. He ate, he had a Big Mac every day for 30 days, just to show people that they don't need to have like a worry about sort of eating the foods that they enjoy, as long as you know their calories are in check, everything else is in check, they can enjoy food. So whether it be pizza, whether it be a Big Mac, whether it be the Aussie version, mm. pie. Chocolate milk. milk. Yeah. I feel like this is a fair few more calories than one Big Mac, though. Yeah, it, it definitely would be, <laughs> but it just means that we're going to be eating some big ass salads, which is what he said. Is that fill yourself up with salad? Now, um, I don't uh, know if we can go a full month, though. Like I said, I'm I'm going to Lombok. What's the date? I can't find chalky milk and it's the 14th and pies today, right? So if we do this for two weeks, then we're still within the time limit for our necessary needed time limit. Yep. Okay, cool. We're going to do this for two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks from today. It's about 850 calories. Okay, every day for the next two weeks, starting right now, I'm going to have a chalky milk and meat pie. I'm going to check in with you every day. Yep. And we're, um, I'm going to track calories. So the reason why I like this... I think we should track calories with this. Well, I think so. <laughs> Obviously, we have to. So I did 12 months of extreme dieting. I've spoken about it heaps of times. So I won't oh, go yeah, into it. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I did. And the reason why I did it is because I wanted to... Um, you know, I've been in the industry for over 16 years now. And even though I got sucked into like the keto and all these different yeah, things, yeah, and, yeah. you know, the supplement claims and whatnot... And um, I wanted to trial it for myself because no one that I knew had actually gone through every diet and I wanted to see what they actually did. So blood test, DEXA scan, tracked everything and it was a really anticlimactic 12 months yep. where I got to the end of it and I was like, oh, i got to read, I'll write a book and tell everyone all this information. Yep. And as far as body composition went and hormones and, and um, uh, inflammation, it essentially just came down to calories. There was little to no changes in anything whatsoever. Yeah, you hate to dumb it down so much because there is so much more. But for the vast majority, like that fundamental principle, if that gets missed, everything else doesn't really matter Yeah, that much. Yeah, like 95% of it. It's like yeah. move and eat within your means. Yeah. Yeah, and it's and like if I ever go speak, with, like if I'm ever with True Protein and I'm doing like a workshop or a seminar and people kind of want to know the silver bullet... And I'm like, yeah, listen, it essentially comes down to this and this. And they're like, no, I want you to sell me some super duper hormone boosting supplement pre-workout. Not not just consistent hard work over time. Yeah, yeah. And that's (laughs) that's, that's what it came down to. Even like VO2 max, so I did my tests. And it all essentially came down to you would train. And when you go through a cycle, you'd begin to peak. It'd take probably five to seven weeks for me to reach like um, uh, almost the peak. Yeah. Um, and I could only maintain that for a few weeks. And then just physically and mentally, I'd have to back it off. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find that as well? Um, well, I don't know. My training's pretty, I would say, sporadic Duh. for the last... <laughs> um, not, not so much sporadic in that it doesn't... Like, I don't take many breaks. Yep. But... It is. It's not very structured. So, so kind of like, have you heard of the Brendo method? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're, we're actually going to go into all of this stuff, but can we crack these pies yeah, now? Let's because go. I'm hungry, man. Yeah. Um. All right. I'm gonna. What, hit- you've got the uh, pepper steak. I got pepper steak. Yeah. I was going to get two famous beef pies. Now, where now? Talk to me. This is Mrs. Max. But where did you find them? Was it Bay Marie? Was it BP? It was the BP up the road. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. So these could be from Friday, Arvo. Oh, really? We'll see. Son of a bitch. And you're a bit of a sauce the whole top kind of guy. Oh, how do you do I'm, I'm sort of like a sauce bite, sauce bite. Oh, okay. I don't eat meat pies often, although I loved them as like a kid. And so that's why I wanted to utilize this time to make up for, or this, utilize this challenge. Now, are you going to go time. meat pie? You're going to stay with pepper steak or you're uh-huh. going to have a, a whole assortment? Cheese, bacon, baby. No, I'll go Cheese all, and bacon. I'll go all of them. Mushroom, My man. Chewy. Yeah, cheers. Nice. That's awesome. Oh, bro, that's hard, man. That's definitely from Friday, <laughs> but it still tastes delicious to Dude, me. Dude, that's stale. Yeah. 
I can't wait to get some good ones. All right, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. <laughs> is AJ your real name? Um, I'm going to go with no. What's your real nah, name? No, it's uh, Andrew Jared. There you go, Andrew Jared. But I've just never gone by that, except for when I'm in trouble. <laughs> like, mum, mum will call me Andrew when I'm in trouble, and Kelly will call me Andy. Okay. Kelly's the wife. She'll ask me, and she'll go, what's your real name? I'm going, I don't know, AJ. She'll go, that mm. cannot be his real name. Andrew, Andrew Jared, yeah. Andrew Jared. So, whenever I email you... I'm going to just say, hey, Andrew Jared Worst. from now on. Can everyone on Instagram go to Smith's Fitness and address AJ as Andrew Jared from now on? That's um, Smith's underscore fitness as sorry. well. Smith's underscore fitness. I'll yeah, the show notes. Just to make sure. So the reason I had to ask is because we had um, Kim Monteith, otherwise known as Monty. Yep. I thought Monty was his name until um, I can't I can't. I had to double up. check mm. and I was like, who's this that you're doing the podcast with? Because I was listening the yeah. other day um, and I was like, oh, okay. I suppose that's the internet, though. Yeah, it is. That, that's, that's Instagram. It was, it was two guests in a row. I was like, let's find out their names. Um, okay, what, what's the thing that you love most about the fitness industry? Because you know I'm going to follow it up with. See, I, I like to think I'm quite far away from the whole fitness industry, if okay. you know what I mean. Like, some of those, like, I don't know. I... I, I I don't feel like I fit in very well with the whole fitness. If you say like fitness industry, to me that sort of makes me think of like a fitness expo. And okay. I could not feel like I feel out of place at a fitness expo. What do you think your position is? Because you're still within the fitness industry. But yeah, how yeah, do you, yeah, how do you vision yourself then? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of like that. Uh, it's hard to put, a, uh, put words to it. Because you're, you're a bit of a mixed bag, hey? You yeah. skate still. You listen to punk rock a lot of the time. Yeah, I, that's what I mean. I like you're um, a lad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah, like so. I don't. F- I feel. You know that that side of the uh, the industry that's like um, fitness, sort of model, fitness, fashion, supplements, all that sort of stuff. I feel so disconnected from that. Yeah. And that's not. And it's it's just me sort of being myself when it comes to like my training, like. I, this gym is a reflection of me. Like, I want to train in a gym like this, so that's why I made it like this. Yep. And I'm just very lucky that other people say, oh, shit, I want to train in a gym like that as well. And that's why I have a business. Like, that's basically it in a nutshell. I've got no business, like, knowledge, <laughs> nothing. Like, it's growing, and I try and do my best to grow it. But a lot of the times, like, I could be reading that business book, but mm. I'd rather go on skateboard or go trail running. Except, like, <laughs> to point something out, though, because um, you haven't mentioned a valid point, you, you're um, uh, done sports science, right? Yep. You what, was the, what was the degree that you did? I did um, the Bachelor's of Exercise and Health Science. Uh, that was, like, the three years one. Yep. Uh, and then, so I did that at UWA, um, and then I went back and did, at UWA again, did... Uh, Ended up being another bachelor's, which was only an extra year mm-hmm. um, of exercise rehabilitation. So that was to get accredited as a physiologist. Okay, so exercise you, physiologist. So even though you say like you know you're, you're skate up, like um, not part of the industry, you're very educated in what you do. And what made you do that? What made you do the degree? Because you're a rugby player, right? Or yeah. Player. Yeah, rugby. Okay. Um, why? Why did I do it? I don't know. I think it was just. Back then, I originally wanted to do physio, okay. and I didn't quite get the grades to do physio, like the TE score. Too which busy at, skateboarding, which, bro. Well, no, nah, it wasn't back then. Okay. Too busy playing rugby. Oh. Um, so I didn't get quite quite get the grades for physio, um, and like at the time, like in year twelve, it gets drummed into you like if you don't get that TE score, you know, you're going to be shit kicking the rest of your life, and it's just completely not like that. No. Um, so I could go and do physio now if I wanted to, mm. but I don't. Um, so I went and did sports science instead as a way to get into physio and then I just sort of started to think, oh, this is a bit more for me and went down there, the more, well, firstly exercise rehab and then, um, I, I actually did go back and do my master's in strength and conditioning, Okay. which was exactly what I wanted in my undergraduate. The, ma- the master's at, so that was at ECU. Yes. Um, with is, Huff. Yeah. With, um, with Doc Haff. Mate, that's just like everything you want. Awesome. Yeah, it's an awesome course out. So, like, I couldn't put it... Look, maybe it was a little bit of expectation from finishing year 12, like you go to uni, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, nothing better to do. Mm-hmm. Um, at that point in time, I was still trying to play rugby. 
Yeah. yeah. Did, were you um, part of Western Force, part of the training squad? Uh, the very first academy I was in. Was Ant in that? No. Was he. So we played a couple of game, a uh, couple of years together for WA, like uh, in the juniors. Okay. And then he went to Queensland, I think, or New South Wales. Okay. And made some rep teams over there. So, yeah, I was in the the very first Western Force Academy. Was Lloyd in that? Lloyd Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Such a small. I went to uni with world. I went to uni with Lloyd as well. Did you? So yeah. if someone can hear me wiping the microphone, I've just got meat pie on it. So apologies. <laughs> I know that this is gonna get messy. Um, and um, then to finish off, um, what I want to know: what's the thing that you dislike most about the fitness industry? <laughs> How long you got? <laughs> nah. Um, uh, oh, there's so there's. I would say. Just the um, people getting put on a pedestal more so about the way they look mm-hmm. rather than the knowledge and expertise that they have. From a person that doesn't like um, so playing devil's advocate, because what I find is people who are educated, who have degrees, um, you know, done masters, um, y- you have s- such a greater knowledge um, and then other people who don't have that knowledge, but they can present an ebook or a course or build a following because they know social media. So then, how would you bridge the gap between the two? So people to be, who are educated. To be fair, it, it works in both ways because even saying you know someone's really educated doesn't mean they have the practical application to help athletes or help general population. So there's people that I went through uni with and come out with the same degree as me, and I'd be sort of scratching my head saying like. Would I let them be my coach or yep. that sort of thing? So I don't know. It's um, I feel I feel like you definitely need that. Um, the the I think that's where the passion sort of shines through. Like, and I saw that going through uni. The people that weren't as passionate about exercise as me, they yep. might get better grades than me, but because they're not passionate, it doesn't quite come across. If if, if that makes sense. What about if somebody doesn't have the education level? Um, hasn't gone to uni. They've gone through like a basic. The, PT the good course. thing is, it doesn't matter these days. Yeah, except they're really passionate about what they do. Oh, I would always argue like if you're that passionate, then invest in yourself and go and do the courses. Yeah. The thing is, these days that you can probably get the knowledge elsewhere for a lot cheaper. Yeah. And you do have to be smart. You are smashing that pie, dude. Yeah, I. Uh... <laughs> you do have to be smart about where you get like. Because there's courses and and come and stuff coming out everywhere. Yeah. Um, and you also got to look at where do you want to be down the line. Like you're not going to work for the Eagles if you just have a cert four. Yeah, correct. So so for for me, my goal originally, like I went to do the masters because I wanted to get into pro sport. Yep. Okay. Um, and it's still not ruled out for me. Okay. So these days, it you know, it would have to be a good gig. Yep. Yeah. To sort of walk away from this or let someone take this over yeah um but that was why part of the reason why i went and invested in doing a master's and that sort of thing so i saw the exercise rehab that was good started working as a physiologist realized that it was a lot of like you know fifo workers doing health checks and all that sort of stuff and i was like this isn't really why i got into exercise science yeah so i went and did the masters in hopes of you know a gig in the nrl a gig in the afl yep something like that where i could apply what i've learned Mm-hmm. Um, and then eventually it was like those jobs are few and far between and it's you got to go hire yourself AJ well <laughs> um, uh, from my experience uh, you know coming from supplement companies that work with a lot of the professional teams and knowing the strength and conditioning coaches and dietitians it seems to be a group where there might be five or less key people and they all tend to get all the jobs yeah. and they'll either rotate between or it's very very hard yeah. to get your foot in the door there um, now you are my spirit animal, I believe. As oh, far thanks, as man. I feel like you're my spirit animal. I know. You're, we I, should stop it. <laughs> I don't think um, that I've met someone that does so many different things um, like what I do. So you, um, you've done trail running, obstacle course racing. Um, you've got a massive crew from powerlifting um, uh, that you do here. Um, and CrossFit as well. You jumped into the last Open, I believe, too. Yeah, I've done probably four or five Opens. Have you? Yeah. Are you doing this one? Doing this one. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to do it. I, I was going to do it today. Yeah, you pretty much got till tomorrow morning. So what inspires you oh, to really? do all the different stuff? Yeah, yeah you got to submit by, I think, 9 a.m. 
Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get onto it. Record that thing. What? What? Why do you do so many different sports? Um, um, I don't know, man. I think I don't, it's just uh, I just want to have a go at everything, and and uh, it's easy to say like, oh yeah, but if you do everything, you're never going to be good at one thing. I get told it all the time. But I don't. I don't I'm not sure. Like I don't have the desire to put all my eggs in one basket when it comes to that. Like maybe I will. Um, in the future um, and maybe I will for certain periods of the year like the start of the year was all running that's was like I barely lifted I did a bit of bench press every now and then but I don't know I just like having those strings to my bow I think yep and uh, I don't know I feel, I feel like maybe as a coach it sort of helps you out so if you I don't want to be just a powerlifting coach I don't want to be you know just a PT that helps overweight people I want to be someone that you know can help everyone yeah um, and I feel with sort of my, you know, my um, studies and, and um, you know, experience that I probably can. Yeah. So rather than sort of pigeonhole yourself. Um, and the other thing is, I'm not that genetically gifted at any one thing. It's true of my, true of my <laughs> life, hey. So like if I was like super fit or, or something, then yeah, I might be like, all right, let's do this running thing. Yes. Or yep. if I was naturally really strong, oh, all right, let's try and be a, a, a decent level powerlifter. Yep. You know, it, it would take me a very, very long time to be half decent at powerlifting. Yeah. You know what I mean? And some people might say, oh, you know, you've got to put the time in. And I'm like, yeah, but I want to be half decent at this as well. Yeah. And half decent at that over there. So what's been the highlight of all these different things that you've tried? Uh, it's got to be the ultra. What was it? That was 50K? 53. Okay, was that in the hills? Yeah. Okay. Was it ever? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that was that was the hardest thing. Like powerlifting's tough, um, yep. more from like day in day out. And I probably focused on powerlifting for maybe two years. Yep. Um, when you look like Gigi Mufu. Yeah, I had. So I was. I think I was up to about 106 kilos. Yep. How much? Did you um, about 92. Okay. Um, so that's tough because you're like, I'm achy. I'm a little bit sore. Mm. I got to get myself up and about and like squat your face off or you know yep. dead, deadlift as much as you can. Um, and you got to do that for well at least a, a prep eight plus weeks. And it's pretty monotonous In, the training. Yeah, yeah, and it doesn't leave much room. It takes it out of you. Mm. Like it doesn't leave much room for much else. Like, I was playing rugby still at the time when I started. Um, like to get right into powerlifting, and I'd go to warm up for rugby after like a. A uh, heavy deadlift session, like a day or two before, and I'd be so sore. Yep. I'd come off with like the elbow tendonitis from lifting mm. uh, after a rugby game, from like making tackles and stuff like that, and I'd just come off, and my elbows would just be cooked. It yep. was all just from lifting, so it makes it tough. Um, but then the ultra was more satisfying, a hundred percent, just because I feel like it's not easy to do powerlifting, but it's different. Everyone can just be like, this is what I lift. I'm going to try and make it as best I can in 10 weeks' time and I'll put a package together and go on the platform. One thing which I found with that, because I obviously did the 24-hour enduro. Yeah. Um, I did a Brendo method prep for that. I, yep. I ran it probably once a week and um, everything was just CrossFit outside of that. And I got there and I knew it would be a mental game. And yeah, 24 hours, just complete annihilation and the personal satisfaction you got at the end was just like... Yeah. Insane. I was crying, man. It was like I was insane. nearly in tears. Yeah. I was near I was close. As soon as I spoke to someone, I yeah. just started to cry and yeah. I was like, Why are you doing this? And I think I did that <laughs> a few times. Um and I told the Richie boys for I think about four years that I'll jump into a powerlifting comp and I promised them uh, when I get back, um yeah. I'll start lifting again, I'll jump into it. But something inside of me was like, Man, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be doing like nine lifts, like I don't think you know, it's not gonna be yeah, exciting. But it was so different being there and actually competing in it. Like, it's one lift, it's one split. Yeah, thing. you got to like, execute. You got to execute. You got to be focused. You got to block out everything, and it's like this this insane like intensity all in one moment. And yep. then when you hit it, and the lights are on, and you're like, man, like, and you hit a PB in front of everyone. It was the same um, feeling that I got. But then we got to the end of the day, and um, I felt like I could have trained the next day. I was fine. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was very that, different. Um, that's that CrossFit work capacity. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, <laughs> you, you do so much volume and you smash yourself that it becomes... But that also is what helps uh, you have this 
hashtag Brendo method. Yeah. That work capacity means that you can jump into things. Mm. And that's what I like as well. So I'm sort of, you know, I can go for a run. Like last last week I did four power lifting sessions, mm -hmm. two group sessions and did 23Ks on Wednesday in out in Jaredale. Yep. And I want to be able to do that. I think that's the best way so, to do and, and the work, work capacity built through, like, whatever you want to call it, CrossFit-style workouts, mm. um, it, like, it helps you be able to do anything. Yes. So now it's like, all right, go paddle this kayak. Sweet, I got that. As yep. long as you can stay in the boat. Or go for a swim. Sweet, I got that. Yep. Because you're used to working at that sort of that sort of level. Do you think there's a new age of fitness people, like these multi-sport people? Or yeah, it, I do. It, has, it hasn't got a name yet? No, nah, it doesn't. But I, I know me and you... Um, Where is he? I'm talking about Spirit Animal. That's yeah, what I Ro want to point out. Ross, Ross, Ross Edgley. Edgley yeah. yeah. So the author of the World's Fittest Book, which was sitting here. So he was one of my inspos to do all of this stuff. Um, and yeah, it hasn't been coined anything yet, but it should. And it's, it's guys like It's multi-sport. Multi-sport athlete, isn't it? Yeah. But that, that's that's what's more up my, my alley as well. Like, I do like CrossFit, but I don't... I'm not going to be a CrossFitter. Neither. That's part. That's already past me now. Like, you, ha you had to have been in it for a little while... Or be just starting out now, People right? are incredible. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like, nutcases. Yeah, talking about like, they're just incredible athletes and that's what they invest their whole life to, that sport. Yeah. Mm. Um, so for me, it's yeah, it's more just experiencing everything that exercise, fitness, putting yourself out of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. um, just sort of jumping in the deep end. Now, um, one thing which is actually in this book, it talks about um, programming for endurance, for strength and... I think there's something, else. there's something else in there as well. I forget. Do you think that... So, at the moment, um, I did this powerlifting comp. I liked it. I, there's a chance to qualify for national, or there, there would be if I competed for it. There's a mm -hmm. chance to qualify for the Australian team. It's yep. all within reach. But I don't want to give up running. Yeah. I still want to go to an OCR. Like, I still want to be able to do OCR. I still want to feel good. Mm -hmm. I still want to sit at the same body weight. Do you think that you can train as a powerlifter, but also do running, and still have optimal strength. Optimal strength? No. Um, could you improve your strength? Yes. So optimal to to me would be you're doing everything you can to be at the best strength levels. Yeah. Um, but I think with you know the rise of uh, what some of these CrossFit athletes are doing mm. in terms of like how much they can snatch, how much they can clean, how many pull ups they can do. And how fast they can go run a 5k, I think it's um, it's sort of flipped the script on the I don't know some of the specificity of programming, mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of a lot of what gets sort of bandied about in you know exercise talks or or like fitness circles is being brought down from an old bodybuilding type of program you know like you have to rest yep. a body part a certain day mm -hmm. that sort of stuff and that might be you know that there might be merit to that but then i think crossfit sort of said oh no we trained wall balls yesterday we're doing thrusters today yep. my legs are still fucking huge yep and i can still run on it so i feel like there is something to it do you think that's just adaptation your body just adapts to whatever it throws at the it stress over that time? you put at it yeah because going back to like the brendo method and doing crossfit and so when I pro when when I went into this competition, um, I knew like the capacity that I had. I knew that I wasn't a powerlifter, and there was eight weeks to go. Yeah. And I knew if I got a powerlifting coach, they would have trained me as a powerlifter. Yeah. But I also knew I just needed to get good at the technique. Yeah. And good at doing one one rep. Yep. So I think coming in. So I you trained very specifically, as they would say. I did. Yeah. Which is pretty smart, man. Well, as much as I was like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. It it's was pretty. It's pretty smart because you're doing. Like what you're gonna have to do on the day. That like legit. That was it. And it was if I if I felt good, I'd hit one rep max or go as close to as possible. But I wanted to get good at one movement. I yep. didn't need to work on capacity. If any, too much capacity for yeah. what I needed to do. Yeah. Um. And yeah, that that. So there was a method. It wasn't just stupidity. There was a reason why. But I knew it would be hard to explain for someone who was not a crossfitter. Yeah. And um. And so that's kind of like where it all came from. Um. But. Talking about competition, because you have a solid team here that, and, and um, up there with, I think House of Pain, like you guys would be bringing the most people to the powerlifting comps outside of Ruchi's and Muscle Pit. Yeah, I think it would go sort of Ruchi's Muscle Pit, uh, and then 
you know, us and us Dungeon House of Pain. Mm-hmm. Shout out to all those gyms. Um, they're all very good people. So um, we see them up uh, at the boys' competitions all the time. Um, and that's just... I never really wanted this gym to be a powerlifting gym either. It just sort of half turned into one. How did it come about? Because um, I went to a comp. Uh, <laughs> and then Sally, who was training me, w- were training with me, um, she did a comp with us. Mm-hmm. A couple of other clients were like, oh, yeah, sweet. I'll do it. Um, and they sort of did a comp. That was it. Mm-hmm. Did a comp. Cool. Not that into it. Mm-hmm. I'll just keep training the way you know, I train. But then you know, um, I met steve up there and then he was like yeah i'll come down and train i was like oh you live in rockingham man yeah i got the gym down the rugby club he comes down there awesome. starts training and then you know just snowballed from that so now you got troy then we brought um yeah we so i met troy at one of the comps um and then he came came aboard you know he's really starting to sort of position himself as a powerlifting coach yep um which is great so we we both sort of have a, a handful of guys that we oversee and coach um, and handle on the day and it's sort of grown from you know me and Sally and a couple of others to you know now there's I think we've probably pushing towards 40 odd of our members over four years have come, gone through and done a competition how important do you think it is um, how do you think how important do you think competition not just powerlifting running whatever um, doing the open yeah how important do you think that is um, for your members as far as having, having a goal, reaching it and stepping out of their comfort zone? Um, I think it's, yeah, it's it's really important to keep people on track, I think. it's it's Otherwise, you're just going to float. Um, so whether it be like a HBF yep. 12K or half marathon, if you've got something like in the future that you're working towards, it's a lot easier to come here, turn up, put in the hard work. Um, whereas, you know, the ones that don't have any out and out goals there's nothing wrong with that but they seem to be the one that can sort of have the week off here yeah. and everyone's you know got their own sort of fitness journey yeah. for lack of a better term but um, yeah the guys that have those clear like I'm going to do this um, you know then we sort of sit down I talk to them we, we start to nut out a program and then they're in here working to it get, like, it just holds excited. them ac- it just holds them accountable and then yeah. you, you get the accomplishment um, of doing something that you might not have ever done before or, you know, hitting PBs and then most people are sort of like jacked up to do the next one. Yeah. Oh, massive. It's like an, it's, it's an addiction and definitely the personal gratification you get out of it. Have you ever been nervous going into an event? See, I, I sort of talk up like I'd never get nervous about shit. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd say first competition. Powerlifting. Uh, powerlifting. Um, the ultra I was... Sort of nervous, um, but more just ho- in like a hopeful way. Mm. Just like I wonder what how this is going to go down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I sort of play it cool, like nothing bothers me. Yeah. Even if it did, I won't let people know. Um, <laughs> I, like that killer instinct style. Was I nervous for any of the events? I don't think so. I think I'll be nervous for the um, controlled nerves. Yeah. I think I'll be nervous for the proper the elite true grit. Okay, are you, are you do you, like do you have a goal of like getting podium top ten or anything? Mate, nah, nothing to be nervous about. Trust me, I did it last year. Yeah, it was just I, rigged. So I don't think <laughs> nah. Like realistically, I, if I got top ten, I'd be wondering why there's not better runners there. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, because I, I like I, I'm I'm not running anywhere close to what a good runner should be for a ten k. Yes, obviously the obstacles are there, but it's. It's a runner's game. Yeah. Yeah. It's 10Ks of hills. Unless you're a great runner, but you can't swim, and there's one part you've got to swim. Yeah. And if, if you just can't get yeah, across so it. Yeah, so we did it last year as well, like as a group. Yeah. Um, and I was a bit, and that's why I sort of wanted to jump into the elite, because I was a bit like, I'm going to stand around to jump over this cargo net. Like, I just want to, mm. I'll just go to the next one. Yeah. But then, and then we sort of didn't want to run off like we had a, a group of 10. We yeah. didn't want to just, like, leg it, catch her. Thanks yep. for coming. So we, we did it all as a group and we were sort of, you know, helping the guys and girls over the stuff that they couldn't get over, that sort of thing. But then, yeah, just like the... Because it's, it's almost like a festival kind of feeling. It's a cool vibe. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of people. You're all at the... You know, people are dressed up stupid. They're having a laugh. They're mm. falling off. They're all muddy, that sort of stuff. Yeah. But it was like... There's like a backlog on certain um, obstacles and you're just like, oh, I wish I could sort of like 
have a crack at this a bit more. So yeah. I was like, I'm going to just do the elite. Yeah. So that's Sunday morning, 8.30. Saturday, Saturday morning, 8.30. I hope it's Saturday. It's yeah. a, trust me, it's Saturday. So our group's leaving at 10.05. So my biggest goal would be to get it done in an hour and 35 so I can get back to leave with the group at 10.05 and do a second lap. I did it in one hour 13 last year, so you'll do it, okay, in, you'll do it in about an hour. Because they shortened it as well, didn't they? Uh, they took, they're calling it 10Ks this year. Last year they were calling it 12. No, nah, I think it was 10 points something last year. Okay, sweet. Yeah. It, All it, right, that, that, yeah. You'll I'm, do it. You'll do it, trust sweet. me. So then I'll be have a 20-minute rest and then be back out again with the crew. Yeah, I think that I think Shell's going to do it as well, so we might... Oh, you're not? No, you just nominated. You are now. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> she tore a glue. We're not gonna do it. I was gonna say. I was gonna say I'll go again. So it's gonna be a solo run. Um, so with your guys, like go like talking about people going to True Grit. You guys doing these powerlifting comps. How do you encourage them to get over their fears? Because one thing I find is people want to do stuff. Some people just don't <laughs> want to do it. People do want to do it, except they're too fearful and they'll make up an excuse or they'll just play it down. Oh man, I I'm terrible with like saying the right things to people. Mm. When it comes, and that's like the worst trait for a personal trainer <laughs> or a coach to have. I am very much more like that. This is how I'm going to do it. Yes. Hopefully, you see that that might help. Yeah. And rip in as well. That's but so. It obviously works though. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it does. But I, I almost want to say, like, I try and try and do my speaking through the through actions yeah. a little bit more than. You know, yeah, like leading from the, the front. This, the the yeah, leading from the front rather than like the um, the guy on your shoulder giving you the right words. Yeah, I'd like to be both, but I'm much better at like just ripping in. Yeah, and hoping people come along for the ride. I don't know if I could imagine you giving a hell deep and meaningful like pep talk. I'm I'm one of my. Good <laughs> I always say that that's what Troy's for. I'm really good at it. Hey, yeah, I'll pull people aside and like. I'm, I'm probably better than what I give myself credit for, but <laughs> like, I it's almost like a running joke that like I don't like don't feel feelings around me. Just like <laughs> just that's do like, it. Yeah, just do See it. See what sort of I thing. do. Just do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like that. Um, I just want to point out, I smashed that meat pie. In a bit Dude, of a you're mess. hamming it. Like, yeah, you got to go through that. Mine's thing. stale as fuck. Yeah, maybe I gave you the bad one. I'm just happy that I got to eat a meat pie. Um, okay. I will eat it, trust me. I might heat it back up. So moving forward with you, are you going to do the enduro next year? The 24-hour enduro? Are you? Uh, no. no. Because you're forgetting about something that I put out the other day and you were like, oh, that sounds good. That was the Cape to Cape. to Cape. Cape to Cape. Um, potentially. Because that's, that's in WA, isn't it? Yeah. How long is it? 120 k's. How? Three how, days, I reckon. Three days. 40 k's a day. When? August. I'm not sure, man. I think it was I was August. just throwing it out there and saying because my my brother hit me up and was like, "Oh man, it'd be good to do Kokoda. and then I was like, yep. "Oh, a bit pricey. Like, it'd be great to do it. I'd love that sort of thing." Um, but then I was like, a "Bit pricey. Um, I'm having my second kid January next year, so it's hard to just be like catch ya." Yep. Um. And then I was like, well, Cape to Cape's down there. It's not, obviously, it's not as hard as Kokoda, but it's longer. Yep. Um, my sister lives down in Margs as well. So I was like, oi, bring in some supplies at the end of every day. <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't know. It, would, it was just another um, another idea that I was like, why not? Why can't I? That sort of thing. Yeah. Because for me, I was looking at possibly something like the Margaret River Ultra, which is at 80K, but yep. that's really close to when we're having the kid as well. Yep. So, I was thinking like end of winter or something to just do the Cape to Cape. And I was thinking more like take your daily provisions with you rather than a full pack of camping shit. Because then, okay. it's, then it's just a hike, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. It's kind of boring. You're not going to be able to run it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I'm going to run 40k three days in a row, but I'm going to run part of it. I reckon 120. <laughs> oh man, you'd knock that out in two days. Two days? I yeah, but you've got to have a place to stay as well. Oh, okay. So, it was going to be like Canal Rocks, Gracetown, Gracetown to Contos where you'll have to actually camp. Okay. Contos to Augusta. Okay. I'll have, I'll have to suss it out. So yeah, there's some logistics that need to be like uh, sussed out. So, my plans were I want to um, focus on powerlifting. I'll yep. try and get into the Australian team. Um, uh, AP, we, we're APU. talking APU. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, that natty life. Yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, that would that would be a goal that excites me. Oh yeah. Which is outside of the scope. But In the seventy fives. Ah yeah, so seventy fours. 
Is it 74? 74, yeah. Of course, yeah. of course it is. Powerlifting, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sort their act out. Um, so, I don't know. Like, at the moment, I've had such a big year doing so many different things. I think for Shell and I, we were just like, um, let's just focus on not doing that stuff for a little bit. Nah, man. <laughs> Do more things. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And so, here I am, like, inviting you on, like, three days of running. And you're like... <laughs> yeah, Shell's just like, nah, don't. Because she knows that I probably will, too. And I'll say yes. Um, now, one thing that you guys done here, down here, you built an awesome culture. You said you have no business, no, you had no business experience. You were just winging it. I got no business in business, man. Yeah. So then you're the wrong person to ask, but we're going to do it. So boutique gym owners, personal trainers wanted to grow in the industry. What's your advice? Uh, my advice? Oh, shit. Train everyone. Um, what do you mean? Just train like... Your friends? Everyone. Friends, <laughs> family... Um, overweight people, athletes, anyone you can get your hands on, mm-hmm. train them all. Um, I feel like the find your niche is sometimes like the wrong advice for people mm-hmm. when it comes to, you know, and especially I came out of uh, uni thinking, oh, I just want to train athletes and there's going to be athletes that just want to come and, you know, train with it. Nah, they don't. Yep. You know, like there's there's a market for for all types of people. Yes. But, I don't think you have to pigeonhole yourself very early on. Oh, especially early on. Like, if you just want to train athletes and you've got no you're skill... Have, you're going to have a hard time. You're going to have a hard time. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing would be, I can only really speak on what I did. Um, and that was, you know, I, I started boot camps, like, part-time with my friends and um, Kelly's friends. Okay. And then I started a boot camp where I was working, like, after work. I was yep. like, all right, like, they're all exercise professionals and physios and that sort of stuff right, I'm going to do a session mm-hmm. um, and then I eventually they started paying me for it which yep. was good um, and then you know I did boot camps down at the park and then I just started PTing out of my it's garage garage right? man yeah, like that's five years ago but that's what that's like a common story these days I feel yes like it's not you're not like brand new just because you started in your garage like a lot of people have yeah. and built it and it They've obviously done something right along the way. Like, to put your finger on what you did right, I don't know. Well, body I, I say every day, like, I'm waiting for someone to come and be like, jigs up, AJ, get a real job. That's so funny. Yeah, well, Body Magic was the same. Um, is it um, Jared? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he, he, I think... He still trains people in his garage, doesn't he? I was going to say, yeah, I'm pretty sure he still does. Or well, now he's on the bachelor, Bachelorette. It just... It, and he's been training out It goes Rebo. to show that you can... Like, yeah, it's cool if you had, like, a multi-million dollar gym and had all the bells and whistles. But at the end of the day, that, that's not what gets people results yep. or, or gets people up and about. A lot of people don't care whether it's what brand of, you know, hip thrust machine you've got or anything. It's like, do they enjoy the experience of training with you, under you, in your facility? Mm. That matters more. Yeah. Um, and that's like, we've still got that real garage vibe in here. And that's some people will come in and they will turn their nose up at it. And I'm like, well, it's not for you then. Like, yeah. I, I always tell people when they come in, I'm like, you got a free week trial, make yourself at home. Mm-hmm. I'm not a salesman. I'm not going to push paperwork on you. After a week, let me know if you're in, if you like the way we go about it, then we rock and roll. That's so funny. That's like my sales pitch. It's like the... And, it- and pre- people are probably like, no, oh, he's missing out on customers. But for me, if it's, I would hate to sell someone off the, all these promises and get them signed up and all that sort of stuff and they're not invested. So I'm like, spend a week here. Like, it's your house now. Yeah. Treat it like it's your garage, like it's your gym. It's like the... Ant- that's, that, that's my... The yeah. anti-marketing marketing. Um, <laughs> we had um, uh, Harry Williams on, the handstand. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I listened to a bit of that one. Yeah, so he's... Um, yeah, the Caucasian Snoop Dogg. Yeah. And... Um, so we're talking about his clients, and I think he was running 60 clients at one time through WhatsApp. And I'm like, you don't use a Excel spreadsheet? And he's like, no, no, it's all just WhatsApp. I'm like, how do people sign up? They contact me through Instagram. And I'm like, oh, okay. And, it, and then like he'll just send them to their website, which is one page. And it's like, this is not for peacocks or show ponies. You know, this is what I expect. If this is you, email here. Otherwise, you know, I bid you farewell, that sort of thing. Dude, it's... It- <laughs> I love that shit because yeah. <laughs> uh, I would rather have a hundred people that are that like dig your vibe and are into it than a thousand people that you know don't rate what you do. Yeah. Um, and like the even this building, like 
you might say, oh, where's like the signs? It's hard to find. I was like, oh, that, I just joke. Oh, that's part of our screening process. <laughs> you got to find it. Like, you, it's not so much like that, but I'm like, man, if you want to train here, you'll, you'll figure out like where it is. You'll get in contact mm-hmm. and you'll train with us. That's actually Look, really it's, valuable. And then you get the people that want to be here already. They're they're screened out. Like, yeah, I don't know. That, and p- like marketing and business people be like, "What? This guy's got no idea." That's so. Funny. And I would I would agree with them. <laughs> <laughs> but it's working. It's well, working. yeah. Like I said, I'm just I'm waiting for the day someone just says like, "Nah, mate, uh, clean, <laughs> clean this place up. Go wa- get a real job." I'm waiting for the day that you release Smith's method. Smith's method marketing. It Dude. could be the answer to Brando <laughs> Methods programming. Yeah, so I, I like I like um, what Harry's onto there. That's yeah. classic, that. I'm going to sort my website out. I think it's really good. One page website, just screen And that's not like, I hope people aren't hearing that and thinking, this dude doesn't even want anyone in his gym. <laughs> of course not. Like, I just want people that are invested in what we do and like, yeah, we don't want, you know, those show ponies and that sort of thing. Like, there's yeah. gyms for that and that's fine if, if that's your, if that's jam. the way, yeah, if that's your jam, yeah then it's different to my jam. I love it. And last, last piece of advice, so that was for people training. This is just for everyday people looking to get into fitness. You said train everyone. Oh, less yeah. Than, so let, can, I, di- I didn't really answer your question too well. We went off a little bit there. That was um, fine. Okay. Um, a- anyway, for those people that want to get into like PT and stuff, train everyone. Um, try and find somewhere where you could probably maybe follow someone who is training the people you want to train. That's one thing that if I could do uni again, I would do. I I know I'm going back here a little bit, but I would go back and sort of try and get some sort of internship going. You said recommend courses. Sorry, I wrote a note. Um, Courses. You mentioned courses that people that don't go to uni, there are way to, there's probably ways to purchase courses. Who are the people that, they said, who's your favorite or programs or courses? I don't, I haven't done any. Well, you paid an exorbitant amount of money to do it properly. Yeah, so, and I know people are like, oh, you got to stay up on your continuing education. I read back through my uni notes. Mm-hmm. I go through my lectures again. Yep. Um, I, like, I, I read up studies on Google Scholar. Mm-hmm. Um, I, so, I haven't, in that, in that sense, I do stay up on my continuing education, but I haven't done any external courses because, for me, like, I was looking at doing the Weightlifting Australia one. Yes. Um, you know, and I'm thinking... I'm going to go spend two days to someone teach me how to snatch. I know how to snatch. I've been snatching since I was 14. Yep. Like, it's just to get like that letters after your name sort of thing or a certificate for it. Which won't impact your business in the scheme of things. No. Unless you're going to open a club. Not at all. Um, So that sort of makes me think, well, why why would I go and do, you know, the weightlifting course when I'm... And yeah, you'd learn stuff from it. Yep. Um, You can learn something from everyone, but... Yeah, in, in terms of courses, those sort of things, I feel I've already got covered. Yeah, sure. Now, if you're fresh, then yeah, it'd be great. I would go and do the, uh, is it AWF, the weightlifting? Uh, yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, so I'd go and do that course. I'd go and do the ASCA level one. Yeah, strength and conditioning. Um, and then I would do, like, you've got to do your cert, was it four and five? Uh, three and four. I never did them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to him. It's cert three and four. Is it three and four? <laughs> it's three and four. Hey, I'm going to start a five. Cert five. <laughs> People are like, what's cert five? I'm like, that's come called, here, come here. That, that's called the master trainer, <laughs> and I believe that it's called the diploma. Oh, what? There I is a cert so. five? Uh, I think so, an equivalent. I know that oh, okay. a- 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 e- I F yeah. package one called but the I, master But there's trainer. so many, like you could, so it depends what you're into, but I would go the AWF and the ASCA on top of your, your PT courses, and then, you know, there is... Um, the external ones that you know you can find off off your favorite Instagrammers and all that sort of stuff. Sebastian that, Orib. Yeah, so you can go and do that stuff. I mean, you're definitely gonna you're gonna learn a heap in that. Yeah. You might learn more than what you learn in your ASCA, but at the end of the day, a lot of employers aren't gonna care that you went to an Australian strength coach seminar mm. over accredited by ASCA. Yeah. And people may agree or disagree with that, but that's just the way it goes. Yeah. Especially if you're looking to get into like pro pro sport. Oh, absolutely. So, um, you, you just got to sort of think where do you want to position yourself and, and sort of cover your bases. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now... So, I, find, I, I, I actually answered that question then. You did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was good. We're done. Now, for people who, for people who um, aren't working within the industry, yep. but want to get into their fitness, want to try something new... Um, what to you- Helmshaw Way, Port Kennedy. There you go. The address. Uh, that's, the a- that's the address. That's the address. 
That was the perfect plug. Right at the end. I love it. Can you say that again? To Helmshaw Way, Port Kennedy. It's on the corner of Blackburn, and the sign and the building faces Blackburn. God knows why. Yeah, like, that's why we parked out the back. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, if you can't, it's a screening process. Yeah, we're lucky that the <laughs> door was open. Um, so that's Smith's Fitness in Port Kennedy. You also do your own podcast. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we um we've been a bit slacking on it lately, but got to be consistent. No, I know we got to be consistent, but we're trying to take that Tuesday as more of a uh, um a content production. So whether it be podcast, whether it be our own little videos, yep. that sort of stuff. So. We will be podcasting again. I think we're up to like 25 episodes now. Mate, I'm only up to 51. Yeah, so we're, we're on your tail, mate. Um, <laughs> so, we, yeah, we, we enjoy that. It's just me and Troy. We do like sports news and shit. It's, it's just fun. It's fun. It's slowed down now because we don't have really anywhere to record it. Like, we could record okay. it in the gym, but our equipment's not as fancy as Perth Fit Fam's. Mate, when you get in the top 50. So, once I move into... <laughs> yeah, I know. What's that about? Um, You're killing it, mate. Just consistency. So, we are in the top... Um, top downloaded fitness podcasts. Um, I think it must have been. I don't know where my VPN was at that point in time, but yeah, we're we're just consistently like in the top uh, downloaded fitness podcast now. Well, I think we're like 30, thirty. Well, if you listen to this, Smith Fitness also has a podcast. Yeah. So yeah. make sure you go over, like and subscribe, <laughs> five star review. Yeah. We, we promise we'll put out some new episodes. Ah, uh, I love it. I'm plugging all of this now. It's, it's all about cross pollination. <laughs> all right. AJ, it's been an absolute pleasure. Nah, work. thank you very much. I want to say before you sign off, yeah. I think you're doing an awesome job, man, and it's um, it's great to see someone sort of take initiative um, to do what you do, and I love, I really love the fact that you don't pander, which you easily could do, you could easily pander to, um, you know, the more popular social accounts and sort of get yourself around them, but you give time to, I'm going to say, people like us, the little people. The, <laughs> the little people. I you just know like, where I'm coming from with that. I uh, think you're doing yeah. a good job, man. So it's um. Thanks, man. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know. You know what? It's like I just chat with people that I want to chat to. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's like that's it. good. It's very it's very selfishly unselfish. Yeah. But it's like I just want to chat with people I want to chat to. And you know what? I've been I've been doing this for sixteen. Well, not perfect, fam. I've been in the game for sixteen years, and it, what I learned is so many people have such cool stories, information. Um, and they might not have, you know, 100,000 followers, but everyone has insights. I wish that I podcasted every single one of my conversations with people. Yeah. And that's why this started. I just wanted to, um, I just wanted people to hear the conversations that I have. No, it's good. And to be a fly on the wall. You're doing an awesome job, man. Thanks, dude. So we're going to do the meat pie and chocolate milk challenge. I'm going to have to go get a DEXA scan. 14 days. 14 days. I'm not going to get a DEXA scan. I'm going to use my cheap scales. Okay. In my uh, toilet there. <laughs> that dude. They said I was 15% body fat. Shredder. That's fine. Fuck. I think I'm probably about I thought I'd be lower. No, nah, I think I'm about... I was devastated. How old are you now? 32. Yeah, I'm 34. Um, so I used to sit routinely at 9%. Now I sit at about 15%. Jesus. Yeah. 9%. Peeled. Yeah, 9%. Peeled. Body All body right. Life. I'm going to use that. So I'm going to do... I'm going to eat this and then I'll go weigh myself. Yep. I'll... Take the socks off so it does the old body fat percentage as well. <laughs> yes, done. We're gonna <laughs> let's see if we can lose body weight over the uh, body fat over the next two weeks on the old uh, meat and chalky meal. For AJ sure. Smith, absolute pleasure. Cheers, man.